This is the 34th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In this video, we're going to take a look at a method that will allow us to access our NAS from the internet. The reason why we've chosen this option over Synology's Quick Connect is that we feel that this method will offer more flexibility. So if in the future we decide to use a different domain name or we purchase a static IP address, configuring our NAS should be easier. As our broadband connection is integral to the connection of our NAS to the internet, before we start, we first need to make a note of an important piece of information. So from our computer, if we load a web browser and then load Google Search, from within the Google Search field, by typing what is my IP address, we are provided with the IP address that our broadband connection is currently using. So let's make a note of this address as we will be using this information later on. As a typical home network will usually center around a wireless router, most wireless routers will have some sort of firewall that is designed to protect our network from attacks via the internet. This protection will usually just consist of blocking all incoming traffic. So in order for us to be able to access our NAS via the internet, we need to find a way to allow specific types of data traffic to pass through the firewall on our router and then have our router forward that traffic to our NAS. While we could manually reconfigure the firewall on our router to do this, as not everyone is familiar with how their wireless router works, Synology have devised a way that our NAS can automatically configure the firewall on our router for us. However, in order to do this, we need to have something called Universal Plug and Play enabled on our router. Universal Plug and Play, or UPNP, is a network protocol that allows devices on our home network to seamlessly connect with each other which means that as long as UPnP is enabled on our router, we should be able to easily configure our NAS so that we can create the correct firewall and port forwarding rules that we need in order to connect to the internet. Unfortunately, there is a caveat. Universal plug and play is a protocol that network administrators frown upon and will often disable. You see, the problem with UPnP is that it's inherently insecure. This is because the UPnP service on our wireless router will allow any devices connected to our network to open any firewall ports that that device requests to be open. This means that UPnP is relying on the assumption that none of the devices connected to our home network have been compromised. However, if a device has been compromised, as UPnP has been enabled on our router, that compromised device can instruct our wireless router to open any and all firewall ports which in turn could allow the hacker of the compromised device to have wider access to our home network. So while we will be using UPnP in this video, as it will simplify the process for making our NAS accessible via the internet, we do so fully aware of the risks that it brings. More than likely, Universal Plug and Play will already have been enabled on your wireless router. However, as this setting is an important element that will allow us to easily connect our NAS to the internet, we need to confirm that UPnP has in fact been enabled. So first, we need to log into our wireless router and then check its settings. As not all routers have the same user interface, you may need to refer to your user manual to find the UPnP options. Now that we have confirmed that UPnP is enabled, we can log out of our router and then log into the Station Manager using our administrator's credentials. From within the DSM, we now need to select Control Panel. Within Control Panel, we need to locate the heading Connectivity and then select the option External Access. From within External Access, you can see that we have three tabs, DDNS, Router Configuration, and Advanced. Let's start by selecting Router Configuration. 
router configuration will allow us to create a link between our NAS and our router via UPnP. We can then create port forwarding rules on our NAS, which our NAS will then use to instruct our router to open. As we need to set up our router first, let's select Setup Router. A window will now open that checks the compatibility of our router with our Synology NAS. If the two devices are compatible, we will receive a message confirming that the UPnP on our router has passed the compatibility test. When we select Next, we are provided with a summary that confirms the brand, model and firmware version of our router. Let's select Apply. You can see that next to Setup Router, we have a number of buttons. These buttons will allow us to control any port forwarding rules that we create. Let's select Save to save what we've done so far. We now need to create the port forwarding rules that our router will use to allow our NAS to be accessible from the internet. So let's select Create. Within the Create Port Forwarding Rules window, we are presented with two options, Built-in Application and Custom Port. In a previous video, we looked at how to configure the firewall on our Synology NAS using the option Built-in Application. So while we could use the option Custom Port, as we are already familiar with the option Built-in Application, we will continue to use this setting. Now from the list of Built-in Applications, we need to select the checkbox next to any services that we want to be able to access from the internet. So for example, if we want to be able to access the Station Manager, Photo Station, Video Station, Audio Station, Download Station and File Station from the internet, we need to check both options for port 5000 and 5001. We also need to tick the option next to port 80 and port 443, as a number of services on our NAS also require web technology in order to work. Finally, we need to tick additional ports for Video Station, which are the ports between 9025 and 9040. As services such as Share Files with Mac and Windows File Server should only ever be accessible to devices on our home network, we should never tick these options. Instead, in order to remotely access our network shares, we need to use something called VPN, which we'll be looking at in a future video. Once we've selected the services that we want to be accessible via the internet, after selecting Apply, these services will be listed in Router Configuration. If we once again select Save, this will automatically upload our forwarding rules to our router. You will know that your rules have been applied because in the Connection Test Result column, your rules will be marked as OK. Our NAS should now be accessible from the internet. However, in order to test this, let's switch to a smartphone which is only connected by a data plan. If we open a web browser and from the address bar enter the IP address of our broadband connection, when we press enter on our keyboard, because our NAS is now fully connected to the internet, we will be presented with the login screen for Disk Station Manager. While our NAS is now accessible from the internet, currently we do not yet have a domain name to allow our users to easily connect to our NAS. In order to correctly use a domain name, we need to have a public IP address that is static. In other words, we need the IP address that our broadband connection is using to never change. Unfortunately, domestic internet service providers don't tend to work this way, but instead will lease an IP address to your broadband connection for a limited amount of time. This is something similar to the way our DHCP server issues IP addresses to devices on our home network. As most domestic ISPs in the UK do not offer an option that will allow us to purchase a static IP address, but instead will encourage us to purchase a business broadband package, we can get around this problem by using something called Dynamic Domain Name System, or DDNS. DDNS is a service that will monitor our broadband connection for changes to its IP address. When the IP address changes, DDNS will automatically update a service on the internet called Domain Name System, or DNS. As DNS is just really a glorified phone book, DDNS 
will ensure that as the IP address to our broadband connection changes, the entry in DNS is automatically updated. So by using DDNS, as long as we always use our domain name, we will be able to access our NAS from the internet. Let's now return to this station manager and then still from within control panel, locate and select DDNS. We now need to connect our NAS to a DDNS service. So let's select add. When the DDNS panel opens, we next need to choose a DDNS service provider. If we select the drop down arrow next to service provider, we are presented with an extensive list of providers to choose from. However, as we already have a Synology account, which was created when we purchased Synology C2 storage solution, we will simply select Synology from this list. Next, by choosing test connection, we are presented with a login screen. We can now either create a free account with Synology or sign in with an existing Synology account. Once we have signed in, we can create a hostname for our broadband connection. While we decided to use Synology.me as part of our domain name, by selecting the drop down button, a list of alternative domains will be displayed that we could have used. Let's enter the host name that we would like to have. Next, we have the email address that is associated with our Synology account. Heartbeat is an option that will send a notification if our DDNS connection should ever drop. As this is a useful tool to help us if we ever need to troubleshoot our connection, we will leave this setting enabled. Finally, we have external address, which simply confirms the IP address that our broadband connection is currently using. As we are not yet using Synology's DDNS service, status is blank. So in order to start DDNS, we need to agree to Synology's terms and conditions. When we select OK, we're first asked if we want to get an SSL certificate for our new domain name. As this certificate will make our NAS more secure and it's also free to install, let's select yes. As you can see, once we've established a DDNS connection, it will become listed. From the listing, we can see the host name that our NAS has been assigned along with the current IP address that our broadband connection is using. As we have selected our DDNS connection, we're now also able to edit, delete, update, or customize the connection that we're using. Let's now test that we can connect to our NAS using the new domain name that we've just assigned to our broadband connection. If we once again return to our smartphone, and then enter our domain name into our browser, when we press enter on our keyboard, the login screen to Disk Station Manager will load. Let's return to Disk Station Manager and quickly review the Secure Sockets Layers certificate that we just installed. From the sidebar in Control Panel, if we locate and then select Security, within the Security panel we will find a tab called Certificate. When we select Certificate, a list of the certificates installed onto our NAS will be displayed. The certificate that is currently being used by our NAS is the certificate marked as default certificate and is the one that we created for our DDNS connection. If we select the down chevron next to our certificate, you can see that this certificate was issued by Let's Encrypt, which is a free certification service. However, being a free service will mean that a Let's Encrypt certificate does not have a guaranteed uptime and will need to be renewed every three months. Luckily, so that you do not have to remember to renew your certificate, a Synology NAS should automatically renew a Let's Encrypt certificate for you. However, please note that we're using the word should rather than will. This is because, like with all free services, your usage may vary. As we prefer to purchase our SSL certificates rather than use free ones, we will be looking at installing SSL certificates in more detail in a future video. Let's return to external access and make one final adjustment. If we once again open router configuration, because we now have a working SSL certificate, 
we want to make sure that anyone connecting to our NAS is using an encrypted link. As certain web services can be accessed either with or without an SSL certificate, we're going to disable two rules that should force our NAS to only use SSL. In our list, you can see a couple of rules that use the same name but have different port numbers. These rules relate to services which can be accessed either with or without SSL. So we are going to remove the tick from the rule for management UI that is using local port 5000. And we're also going to remove the web station rule that is using local port 80. If you're not sure which services and their corresponding ports use SSL, Synology have documented all of the port numbers that a Synology NAS will use. We have placed a link to this document in the description to this video. Let's select save and update the port forwarding rules on our router. Now for the final time, let's return to our mobile phone and from our browser, once again enter our new domain name. As our router can no longer redirect us to the DSM login page on port 80, we instead have been automatically sent to the DSM login page, which is being encrypted with an SSL certificate. So to recap, in this video, we looked at how to connect our Synology NAS to the internet so that our users can remotely access services on our NAS. We then used a dynamic domain name server service to make sure that our NAS can always be found on the internet as long as we use a domain name. Next, we took a quick look at the SSL certificate that was automatically generated when we set up DDNS. Then finally, by using UPnP, we reconfigured our router so that it would only allow secure connections to be made with our NAS. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at installing and configuring a VPN server. This is to allow our users to securely access the network shares on our NAS while they work remotely.